So now that I've got these platforms working, I essentially have a continuous way of playing the game. But what happens if I fall to the bottom of the screen? Well, at the moment, nothing happens. And that's the thing I want to address next. I want to add a game over condition. So the game over is going to be controlled by a variable called game over. So I'll come down to my game variable section and I will add a new one here. I'll say game underscore over equals false. So it'll begin with a condition of false. As soon as you start the game, you're playing straight away. Now, the reason that the player is constantly bouncing off the bottom of the screen is because I temporarily had a section within the player class move method uh, somewhere down here that says ensure no, it's not this one. So I've got check collision with platforms and check collision with ground. So this was temporary because I, well, I didn't have my constant platforms in place at the time. So I didn't want to be able to fall off the screen while I'm building the game. So at this stage, I don't really need to worry about that because as soon as I launch the game, I start on a platform. So you can't really fall off until you start moving and start playing. So I can just remove this entire section here. Now, if I delete all that code and run this again, you see, nothing really changes because I start off on this platform, but now I can just fall off the bottom. So that's it. I can still press left and right, but nothing's happening. The player is just continuously falling off the bottom and that's essentially it. So that means that I need to add this condition into my game loop somewhere. So if we go back down to where I've got my main game loop, this while loop here, I'm doing quite a lot of the game logic, uh, drawing things on the screen, and then I've got my event handler. So just after I finish drawing everything, but before I go into my event handler, this is where I'll do my game over condition checks. I'll add a comment to say check game over. And the check is going to be fairly straightforward. Essentially what's going to happen is that when the players, uh, well, it's actually very similar to what I'm doing with the platforms. So when the top of the player's rectangle goes off the bottom of the screen, that means that he's fallen off completely and therefore the game is over. Now I can do that check by accessing the rectangle of that instance. Now remember my player class has an instance which is called Jumpy. So this is what I created when I first made him. So the player is the class here, but Jumpy is the instance. So that means that I'm able to access any of these variables here, the ones that say self dot, by simply referring to Jumpy. So this has a rectangle, self dot rect. That means that I can go into this section here and type if jumpy dot rect, which will access that rectangle dot top. So if the top of that rectangle is greater than my screen height, which means that it's gone below it, well, in that case, the game is over. So remember that variable I just defined, game over. We can now set that variable to true. Now by itself, this isn't going to do anything because my game loop isn't set within this parameter. But what I can do just to make sure it's working is just say print game over and it should start off with false. But as soon as I go off the screen and that changes to true. So I know that it's registering and it's triggering. I just need to give some kind of feedback and process what happens when game over is over. Well, for a start, what I want to do is make sure that as soon as the game is over, all of this stuff above within the game loop, such as updating the background and creating platforms and looking for collision and stuff, none of that really needs to happen anymore because the game has stopped. So I can stop all of these processes by nesting all of that within an if statement. Now we can come to the top here, underneath where I've got my uh, frame control, I don't want to change that. Below that, I can add an if statement. I'll say if game over is equal to false. So as long as the game is not over, then we want to carry out all of this block of code underneath. So I can grab all of this stuff down to here and down to what I've just added, the game over section, but not as far as the event handler. I take all that and I indent it. So essentially all of that is only going to happen as long as the game is running. But as soon as we go off the bottom of the screen, this game over variable is flicked to true and none of this is executed anymore. Run this again. Now you won't notice any difference, but essentially all of that has now stopped. So when that has stopped, that means that I need an else statement. So I, I need a situation for if the game over is set to true, I need to be able to handle that. So in line with this if statement here, right down the bottom underneath this section, I can say else. So as long as, as soon as game over is set to true, I want to give some feedback to the player. So I want to put a message onto the screen that says game over, press space to restart. Now, of course, I can't just print because print comes out down here and there's no direct way to be able to display text on the screen in Pygame. So you actually have to create your own function for this. 
Uh, and that means before I even do that, I need to define the font that I'm going to be using for that text. So if we go all the way back up to where I'm defining my starting variables and so on, I've got my colors here and my images. So underneath the colors, I'll add a section to say define font. And I will define I'll define a couple of fonts here because I will need different sizes within the game. So I'm just going to set them up now to avoid having to come back to it later. I'll say font small is equal to pygame.font.sys font. So make sure that you get the capitalization right here. So the first S and then the F, they both have to be capital letters. And then the name of the font. Now you can use whatever you like. For this game, I used, uh, if I'm pronouncing correctly, Lucida Sans. I use this one. And then the size I want to use for the smaller font is 20. Now I just copy this down and I'll create my larger font at the same time. So this is going to be called font underscore big, exactly the same code, but this is going to be slightly bigger. It's not going to be huge, 24 pixels. And now that I have this, I can create that function for putting text onto the screen. Now I already have a little section where I'm having my functions. So I've got my draw background function. Uh, just above it, I will add a new one, which will say function for outputting text onto the screen. I'll say def draw underscore text and this is going to take a few different arguments so first of all I want to be able to output define what text I want so the first argument is going to be text then the font that I want to use and the color for the text so text underscore call and then the x and y coordinates where I plan to display this, uh, the text on the screen. Now what we do with this is first of all we take the text and then you convert it into an image in Pygame. So first I need to define that image. I'll say image equals or img equals font dot render. Now remember this font is this font variable here. So whatever I feed in here is going to be uh, passed to this render function. Now I need to define the actual text. So the text is going to go into it, uh, set this variable to true and then the color that I want to use. Now at the end of this, what's going to happen is I will have an image instead of the text. And now of course, if I have an image, well, we already know how to display an image on the screen. You just call the blit function. I can say screen.blit, just as I've done with the background already, screen.blit. And then the format is the same. It's the image and then the X and Y coordinates. Now the image has just been created. So it's IMG. And then the X and Y coordinates are the two arguments that I'm feeding in here. So that's pretty much it. That's my draw text function set up. And now I can go to my game section, or sorry, my, my main game loop, and to the section where I've got this else statement. So this is when the game over condition has been set to true. So as soon as that's happened, we want to display some text on the screen. I will say draw text. First of all, I want to say game over, just to explain exactly what's happened. And then I just fill in the rest of my arguments. Now the font I will use is that font big that I created. Color will be white, and X and Y coordinates are 130 and 200. The next thing I want to display is the score that the player has reached. Now, I know I haven't actually added in the score counter yet, but I'll add this text in just as a placeholder so that it automatically gets filled in when I do add the score. I'll say score and a little space here. And then I need to be able to add the score variable in as a string. So I need to convert the score variable. Now, it doesn't exist right now, but it will be an integer value. So I'll say string of the score, uh, the score variable, then the font. Again, font underscore big, color is going to be white, and coordinates 130, 250. And then the last line I want is draw underscore text again. And then this is just the instruction to reset the game. Press space to play again. So again, same format, font underscore big, white, oops, all caps. And this is a longer line, so I'll say 40 on the X coordinate and 300 on the Y coordinate. Now, before I go any further, I need to make sure I define the score variable. Otherwise, I'll get an error. So although I'm not actually updating the score at any point, I need to define it just to start off with something. So up here, I will say score equals zero. So that's what I'll start off the game with. Now, if I run this again and just fall off the screen, now it says game over, score zero, press space to play again. Now, I know it's hard to read because it's white on this ba uh, blue background. That's going to be addressed later on as well because I'll have a little fade in effect that changes everything to black. So we'll leave this as it is for now and I'll, uh, it will improve as I add in that effect. But you can see that everything is here and the instructions are there as well. Now if I press space, nothing actually happens. I haven't added that part in. So let's do that now. Now if you remember from when we worked on the player class, I had a section here for inputs from the keyboard. 
So essentially I define a variable, I say key equals pygame.key.getPressed. So this is how I get key presses. I'm going to do the exact same thing to check if the spacebar has been pressed. Now I come back down to this section here. So just below where I've actually drawn that text onto the screen and I've given the player some instruction, I will say key equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And now I'm looking for the spacebar if that's been pressed. So if key square brackets pygame.k underscore space. So make sure these are capitalized here, just exactly as I've done it. If that has happened, then this is where I need to reset the game and restart everything back to scratch. So for a lot of it, it's quite straightforward. I simply need to reset my variables. I had a comment to say reset variables. Uh, the first one is game over. I need to flip that back to false because we're starting a new game. I need to flip it back to false so that the whole game loop starts running again. Game over is equal to false. Now, of course, the players died, therefore the score is reset. Now, I haven't actually updated the score yet, but let's add this in here so that we don't miss it later. So score is also reset to zero. The scroll also needs to be reset back to zero because everything is going to be starting from scratch. All the platforms and the player and everything is going to start at the initial position. Therefore, the scroll also needs to go back to what it was. Next, I need to reposition the player. I'll add a comment to say reposition jumpy. And this is just done by altering his X and Y coordinates again. So remember, I can access the instance or I can access the variables from that instance. So his X and Y coordinates are controlled by the self.rect variable. And when I initially created them, I set the center of that rectangle to these X and Y coordinates that I feed in uh, when I create the instance. So if I go back down to when I created it up here or down here, I say jumpy equals player and these are the X and Y coordinates. So I can simply copy these. I can just take them exactly as they are and set the player's position in that same place. So let's go back down here to where I'm repositioning him. And now rather than creating a new instance, I want to access that rectangle, rect.center, and I'll delete all this bit here because I just want the brackets. So I want an X coordinate and a Y coordinate for his center position. So that's going to put the player back exactly where he was when the game first started. Next thing I need to do is get rid of all of those platforms that I just created. Now the handy thing here, let's add a comment first to say reset platforms. Uh, because they are within a platform group or rather a Pygame sprite group, I'm able to use the empty function on them. I can say uh, platform, not empty, platform underscore group dot empty and that's just going to clear out that platform group entirely so remember before whenever they went off the bottom of the screen i was calling self.kill which just deletes that one particular instance well this is going to delete everything within that group it's going to empty it out completely and it will allow me to start the whole process over again now of course because i've emptied it i need to make sure that i create the starting platform like i have here before all the other ones are generated otherwise there's no guarantee that he's going to start off with something to stand on I just copy this down uh, together with a comment exactly as it is and put it in here. So once the platform group has been emptied, I create the starting platform. And then because the game over is set back to false, all of that code above in the game loop is going to start running again and we'll hit this section and generate all the other platforms. Now that should be everything. So if I run this again, let's just check. So let's just jump a little bit to make sure I generate some platforms, delete some from the bottom. And now I'll fall off the screen. Okay, so you can see the same as before, game over, score is zero. We don't have any control over that yet. Press space to play again. And as soon as I hit space, everything gets reset. Notice the platforms are in a different position. So in fact, keep an eye on where they are now. I'll fall off the screen, try again. And now they're all different except for this bottom one. And that's simply because that is the one that's always defined as it is. The player, he always starts off in pretty much the same place and the game is good to go once more. So that's pretty much it for a game over and a reset condition. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.